Hello and welcome back to another episode of Conquering the JavaScript Interview. Today we're going to be diving into two array manipulation powerhouses, Slice and Splice. These methods uh, grant us intricate control over array elements, allowing for seamless addition, removal, surgical extraction, and whatever else you're looking for on our arrays. So if you're keen on mastering these, we're going to learn how to implement them ourselves for interview questions and just for further understanding and how they work. So we're going to dive on in, but first, and as always, make sure to check the description down below for a link to our community membership. Not only will you get access to Discord where you can harass me and my covalent staff, as well as other alumni and people going through our courses for help on your personal coding journey, you'll also get access to our front end and back and courses that when combined make up our entire pretty large, huge, massive full stack program, as well as my standalone React course that I have built and I continue to update. I'm also in the process of building a few more courses out that you will just automatically get access to for no additional charges in your community membership. So if you have interest, again, check the description down below. Otherwise, let's get back to diving on in, specifically on the brief history of Slice and Splice. They have been since the nascent stages of JavaScript. They have firmly established themselves, their presence, demonstrating their value in any and all programming tasks. If you have done any kind of React work, you probably have messed with Slice and Splice already or any kind of JavaScript work really, right? And these are just long relied upon methods. And I think on some base on, on some research I did, uh, they came about in ExmaScript 3, which was like the 1999 edition of JavaScript and all the cool stuff that came out way back then. So like I said, they've been around for a while. And that was surprising to me, but never again, it does make sense that you need some of these ways of manipulating arrays. So I think it'll be really cool to figure out if you don't know their differences as well as a mnemonic, mnemonic that helps to remember that their differences and how we can implement even simple versions on them on our own, uh, not accounting for a couple of issues with edge cases. But again, that's part of the fun where we implement them simply and I can leave to you or if you're interested, leave comments in, uh, down below this video if you want some more edge cases explored, like an advanced version of this video where we talk about negative indexes or indices rather, and things like that. So at their core, slice and splice provide mechanisms to extract and manipulate portions of arrays. That's it. Basically, they need to determine a starting index. They identify the ending index or a number of elements to be manipulated. Then for slice, we return a new array. It's the big keyword. A new array contained the extracted elements without modifying the original. And then for splice, we modify the original A by adding array by adding, removing, or replacing elements and returning the removed elements. Remember, that's the return value of splice. It returns what it removed, something I forgot when I was writing the script for this video, and I didn't realize it until I had gotten into my first recording that I had forgotten the actual like specifications for their implementation, and I was like, Crap, splice returns something, doesn't it? What does it return? I had to go Google what it was again. So, uh, while slice extracts elements from an array, like I said, splice modifies the original, and that's the big difference. So if you want a mnemonic to help you differentiate them, slice is nice, leaves the original in place. Splice is precise, changes the array's space. So, slice leaves the original in place, splice changes the array's space, right? So. Um, yeah, that's, that's a fun little mnemonic to hopefully remember the difference. I know a lot of times my students will just kind of guess one or the other by console logging or looking at the result until they get it, but we're going to try and be a little bit better than just guessing and try and remember something or some way of remembering. If you have a better way of, uh, of, you know, uh, or a better mnemonic or a better way of, or how you remember it, please get in the comments down below and share with us your magical way of remembering because, well... I like to see the different, that's why I like teaching. I like to see different ways that y'all come up with things to remember, with mnemonics to remember certain things. Anyway, like I said, the instructions are simple here. Just implement our own versions, and we're going to talk about the edge cases and maybe code one or two, but other than that, we're just going to go ahead and dive on in with some of our test cases here. Remember, this uh, I'm trying to make all of these available as code pens that you can just go find uh, for the video to get the prompt and practice yourself, or if you just want the results and to follow along with them, you can pause the video and go grab them from the link in the description down below. So, like I always say, we're going to modify the array object prototype in this code space. This is not something I recommend you do uh, in any large scale project because modifying this object 
uh, with new methods is not going to be very nice to anyone trying to work with you and a terrible idea for consistency unless you're documenting the crap out of everything. So this is something you know how to do. You understand how to do it. You realize its importance in answering dumb interview questions that you might get quizzed on, but you also understand that it's not worth doing in an actual project, right? So here we go. We're going to add a new function to be assigned to our custom slice method on our array objects. Now, slice takes two arguments one start and one end. What is it copying of the array? And we'll talk about the edge cases of if they're not provided here in just a moment. Now, for this particular uh, function or member or method, it needs to return a copy of what we are slicing, right? Because slice is nice and makes a copy. So what we're gonna do here is make a new array in memory to return after we are done iterating over our start and end indices. So not an if statement, Luke, what are you doing? So we're gonna have a for loop, surprise, surprise, almost all of these array methods we're implementing in this array architect series have one of these put in there somewhere. Well, we're gonna start i at wherever our starting index point is provided. I will continue until the end of our endpoint, and then we'll continue on iterating one element at a time as always. Uh, so we're going to have this kind of window of our array given to us, and we're simply going to, into the result, push into the array each element. Remember, in the keyword this gets its context from the thing to the left. Wherever we write dot custom slice, to the left of dot custom slice will be an actual array. And at its simplest, this is all it needs to be. So we can go up here and grab one of these simple examples, uh, array one, two, three, four, five, the combination to my logic uh, luggage. Let's go ahead and, even though this will work, I don't want to rely on globally scoped, or uh, yeah, I don't want to rely on window object variables, so we're going to actually declare this the keyword, like const. Let's go ahead and console.log custom slice, and we're going to say start at index 2 and continue to index 4, save the file, and we go 0, 1, 2, and then three and four, and remember it's non-inclusive, so that's why it's not less than or equal to. So four will be the numbers three and four. So, you know, I realize doing these numbers here might be a little bit confusing. Let's change it from that to that. There we go, and that actually does make more sense. So index two will be the number two, right? Because now the indexes match up with the actual values that you're not trying to think differently here by shifting values and uh, indexes. So now the indexes match up with the values. So yes, two up to four non-inclusive is how slice works and there we go. Now we do have some issues to contend with here. For example, what happens if, I don't know what's actually gonna happen if I don't provide any arguments at all. This is a valid call to the native method as is. It provides an array with nothing inside of it, but we know that if you do a slice with no parameters in vanilla JavaScript, you'll actually get a full copy of the array, meaning we need to provide some default parameters for our start and end function. So here's some considerations to make. Now, I am aware, and this was a literal today I learned, I learned this today, and I've been using this for years, that you can actually provide negative indexes or indices to our array methods, and they'll actually count from right to left. It'll transpose our negative values to negative array in indices on our given array. It'll actually go from right to left and it'll wind up undefined once we have too many negative numbers, which I found fascinating. But rather than, that's gonna be more work than it's worth implementing in this video here, but just know that I am aware of that. You are welcome to whip up your Odin code pen and show us all how to do so if you wanna account for some more advanced edge cases. But remember, this is more of a beginner-friendly series, so, be aware that's something you can do. Try implementing it or thinking about it at least yourself. Or if you're in an interview and you haven't coded it before, bring up that you know about it and leave a comment or something in your code that says you'll handle it. But for now, we're gonna handle a separate edge case, which is handling arguments that aren't given. Now, if both aren't given, we're gonna have to have some default args. And a lot of the times, if you provide one argument, it would represent the starting index with no end index, right? So does this work? Yeah, it doesn't provide anything either. So. If no start value is provided, I think we should probably start at the beginning of an array given its zeroth index position. And then our end will be whatever the length of our array happens to be, and voila, we have some really good edge code, edge case handling code just by adding some default values to our parameters. Start at the beginning of the array, 
and at the end of the array if no args are provided. And now this mimics more closely what we see in vanilla JavaScript with our log right above my head there. So that's actually more closely resembles what we would actually see with a call to slice. Now let's see, if I said, let's pass in index three, zero, one, two, three, we should see till the end of the array. And there you go. Again, more mimicking those edge cases we see in the actual method itself, not the negative index indices stuff, but uh, yeah. And then we have one potential issue here that I still see that we can cover here in this little discussion for again, beginners, but begin to push harder into intermediate territory, where what if I provide an out of bounds value? What's gonna happen with this for loop, right? So at the moment, the for loop will always terminate at the end. So if I provide one, it stops there. If I don't provide one, it goes to the end of the given array's length. So that begs the question, what happens if I provide a value outside of my array's original length. We have no condition, no sanitization, nothing to check what happens if I provide values outside the bounds. Now we know this is not an error or runtime error in JavaScript of any kind. It will simply be unable to access elements outside of the array's bounds, which means they round up as undefined, which is what we see up there above me in the console log. That is not an error, it's just putting undefined values into an array, which could be, well, annoying, problematic, require more sanitization down the line or something like that. So we can add, you know, an additional check in our iteration process to make sure that we account for this problem. So if they provide out of bounds indices, we still iterate only to the end of the array and not any further. But uh, if they, Otherwise, if they behave normally, it will be almost like a redundant safety check, and it shouldn't inhibit our code or be very performing performance inhibitive in any way. This is actually really simple. All we need to do is add our AND clause, our AND operator here, our AND logical operator, whatever the term for it is, and we're gonna simply ask it to not only uh, go to the end of our specified length, but we also need to check and make sure that it's not exceeding the length of the original array because that doesn't make sense. So with that one additional little check right there, I'm gonna rerun this file and check it out. It now handles the problem of what happens if it exceeds the scope or the, uh, the index bounds of our original array. We now have that check there to handle that. So we already handled a couple edge cases just by introducing that, that thought of what happens if we provide numbers out of bounds or provide no numbers or missing numbers or whatever, right? So now we got some ways to handle Handle this. And again, there's more things you could do, like making sure that you if handle can, can handle and like transpose negative numbers back across the original array from right to left. But again, that's pushing it for the scope of this video. So yeah, that's, that's how Slice is gonna be working for us here. And now we're gonna be goofing off and learning how to implement Splice, which is a little bit more complex, but nevertheless still uh, intensely important given how long it's been around in JavaScript and how often we use it. So I know that a lot of my students in our full stack program, especially when they get to the React part of that full stack program, which is again, the front and back end courses combined in our community membership, um, they get to the React introductory section and I talk about immutability of React state and how that happens, not just React, but like state management in general typically means state is immutable, meaning you do not modify state directly. You instead make copies of state and modify the copy and the slice function is a great way when students learn on their most simple React to do app we call Chirper in our course. The students learn how to build a basic little messaging like to-do style application. You write some stuff in an input, you click some button, it takes the value of the input and adds it to an array of things it's mapping over and displaying as JSX on the screen, right? So in that case, you don't modify the original state of the array. What you do is you make a copy of that array, modify the copy, and then update your state with that modified copy. And the slice function is a great way to handle that, but remember, it's a shallow copy only. So okay, enough rambling on this stuff. Let's go ahead and move into the next one. We're gonna do, or evidently wrong hotkey there, or wrong key press as my keyboard is shifted to the left here for gaming mode. We're gonna say custom splice. I think I say that in a lot of my videos, meaning I do that all the time where I shift my keyboard away from my home keys, don't I folks? Okay. Like I said, this one is gonna be a little bit more involved than Slice, so let's buckle in, and we're gonna handle less edge cases for this one, because there are different ways of solving it, but I didn't wanna use other array methods. Like, the, I've seen implementations on Stack Overflow or GitHub, like issues or comp, like, you know, 
threads or comments under like issues where they show different implementations for interviews and things like that. Some people use other array methods. Uh, for example, I've seen someone do slicing inside of Splice, which I was like, eh, I mean, I get it. I can see how that can be really useful for dividing up the bounds of the start and the end of the array. I've seen uh, individuals do shift and short circuits and things like that, but I'm gonna try and stick to using only push as that's the one I've been generally using for everything in this Array Architects series. So let's see if we can figure this out with only the push method available at our disposal and simply using logic of loops and variables to achieve what we want to achieve. So remember, splice is more complex. In our mnemonic, uh, it was slice is precise it changes the array space, right? Because slice, slice was nice, leaves the array in place. Slice is, splice, oh my goodness. Splice is precise and changes the array space. So uh, splice is gonna take a couple of parameters here. So it's gonna need the starting index of where we wanna start to add things, remove things, or change things. We need to know how many things we are removing, if any, meaning we need to provide a count for the number of items we are deleting. And then from there, we can pass in, according to the splice specifications, a comma-separated list of how many things we wanna add in this place if we are uh, surgically adding something into an array here. So we are going to collect this comma separated list as one parameter called items to add. We can do that by simply using our spread or our, in this case, rest operator, where it collects the rest of the comma separated values into an array for us to use. Now, first things first, we need to know what we are deleting. So what we're gonna do is we are going to collect our list of deleted items from our array if we are deleting anything. Because remember, at the end of our array method, that's what this also needs to return. Oh my goodness, my home keys are just not working on me today. Or my, my uh, fingers are not going where they're supposed to. Okay, because remember, at the end of the day, our splice array method needs to return what it deleted to mimic the like specifications of our simple implementation of splice here. So ultimately after all my logic in between these steps has finally done its job, we need to return our deleted items. So again, we need to manually extract our deleted items so we can return them at the end of this whole thing, which sounds like a great use case for our for loop. We are going to start at the provided index, AKA our start value. We need to go to our start plus delete count. So wherever we start, we go to and iterate as far as our delete count tells us to go. So whether that's zero, one, two, three, four, whatever, as far as our delete count tells us to go, that is how far this thing needs to iterate. And like just like before, where we accounted for what if that goes out of the bounds of an array, that could be the problem, that could be a problem. So we're gonna go ahead and include that edge case here as well, where it's also going to say, but make sure that the start and delete count don't exceed the length of the array. Otherwise, we're going to end up with a bunch of that undefined stuff again. And then from there, just simply iterate over each element itself as we go through this process. And just like I said, our handy dandy push method is about the only one I want to use here to understand how this works. Push each element into our deleted items array, and this will keep track of which ones we are deleting, right? So at the moment, we actually haven't built any kind of new array here of any kind. Yeah. So we need to know uh, what our new array is going to be, right? So we need to build a new array that represents the results after the splice operation has been uh executed. So we need to know what our new array is going to look like. Because remember, this thing modifies in place, which is why we can't just return the new array and be done with it. We actually have to do a couple extra steps in this particular case. So const new array. There we go. Fingers are starting to work a little bit better now. We have our new array. We're going to iterate from <laughs> let i equal zero. i is less than start. I plus plus. So this will get us the uh, add elements from the start of the original array up to the splice start index. So if our splice was in the middle of our array, we need to collect the elements before that. So we're gonna start at the beginning, 
aka i equals zero, and go to the start point. So if anything is added after, is modified after the start point, we collect the elements before that, right? So that's what we're gonna say. In our new array, push and collect, rather, all those starting elements into the new array. Then we have to add whatever new items we want into our array. So again, if we've already collected the items before the start point, now we're gonna have to add the new things after that start point, which will be our items to add array right here. So we can use a shorthand for this where I can say for uh, const item of items to add new array dot push our item from our items to add loop here. And then all we have to do is add the items that are after the deleted segment from the original array. So what we're gonna say is for let i equal zero. If you're wondering, do you have to do this many loops in other solutions? No, it really depends on what you do. If you use the shift method, if you're okay using that, you can actually get away with one loop, even though shift will still re-index and reorganize the entire array anyway, so it's not very computationally better than this, but it is cleaner to read, I'll give you that. Um, yeah, so we have to start, not at zero, my apologies, start at wherever our start plus delete count takes us. This is the window after our modified section, however large that was. We simply go to the end of the array to collect all the array elements we haven't accounted for yet and go one item at a time. So from there, we take our new array and push in all the elements after our modified section, AKA our items to add. So whatever our modified section was, we go to after that part and collect the elements that were after that modified section. And then finally, we have to copy the new array values back to the original array. And this is where it got complicated for me to remember to how to write this myself and remember not to get it confused with other array methods. We don't return the new array. Remember, this is a modification. Slice is precise and modifies the array space. So what we need to do is clear the original array. And there's actually a clever trick I learned how to do this using array truncation. We're gonna take the original array and I learned that the length property is not just a getter, but also a setter. Meaning I can clear the original array by doing this clever little trick. I can set the length of the array to zero, okay? So when I do this, I effectively truncate the array to have a length of zero, which means I've removed all of its existing current elements. So in essence, it's another way to clear empty an array without creating another new array instance. So that's what that's going to do. It's going to clear out that original array with a clever little trick. And then from there, all I need to do is, I've been consistent, might as well be consistent, take each item of our new array that we have been collecting here when we collected the start parts, the modified part, and the end parts, which means in our current array we are modifying in place, I create my new array by going over my new array. And that's it. We should have this now successfully implemented. Oh boy, that was fun, wasn't it, folks? So let's give her a whirl here. Uh, splice, let's do this one. Remove two items starting at index two, eight, and nine. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Const array equals one, two, three, four, five. So let's see, if I console log, Array.customSplice, and let's say at index one, which is the value two, I do not wanna delete anything, and I wanna add the numbers eight and nine. So I would expect to see from the start, no delete, it'd be, I'm assuming, one, two, eight, nine, three, four, five. That's what my array is going to be, because remember, it's before the start, zero, one, is that right? <laughs> oh boy, talk about professional here, folks. One, two, eight, nine, three, four, five. Did I miss do something? I don't think so. Hold on. Because oh, custom splice is not a function. I'm testing it off on my other monitor here because I'm curious if that's the actual value. Yes, okay, so it was before the start value. Okay, so yeah, that's the start 
non-inclusive, so zero, one, non-inclusive, so we get 189. That is the actual vanilla implementation of it. So I could have just looked at my code up here and told y'all what that was, yeah. Because it starts, and that's how you collect the deleted items at that start point. Okay, yeah, so that is correct. I just double-guessed myself, and I don't want to have to reshoot this entire video or edit this part out, and I'm leaving it in because I'm human and I make errors too, even though I wrote this script, I wrote worked with this all morning and afternoon, and yet I still make the basic mistake at the end of the video. So we're leaving that in. But yeah, that that is the correct implementation. So when we splice this thing here, it's gonna be at that starting index. That's where we uh, add our new items at that position, at that start point. That's our modified section. There's the eight and nine added on into it. So if I change it here, and let's say we're gonna start at that same starting point, and we're gonna say nuke a couple of things out of it. Yeah, so we nuke two, we delete count two items starting at position one. So that would be the two and the three, which would get one, four, and five. So yeah, yep. So we get one, four, and five as our expected values in this case, right? So there you go. And again, the first console log is what it removes, if anything. That's our return deleted items, which again matches the specifications of Splice. So like I mentioned, this one's a little bit more complex than the rest here, but nevertheless, um, I think it's cool to know the basic fundamentals of how it might be implemented because it gives you a stronger mastery, at least it should, because I still make the same goofy mistakes even though I get it. Uh, it at least prepares you for interviews, so they're probably not gonna ask you to implement these things. If they are, it's probably more of an old school, large enterprise type place where you just have like a curmudgeon of an interviewer that thinks this is a good way of questioning students or questioning new employees coming into their interviews. But nevertheless, it's cool to know how to do this. It gives you a stronger command and mastery over these array methods. And I think it's just fun to learn how these things got implemented into JavaScript. And it begins to tell you of the edge cases and scenarios they thought of, like when we had to think of the or out of array bounds problem for our slice function. And again, for the parts I'm not even covering of what if you provide negative integer values for the array bounds, how you, would you handle that as well? Because it can go from right to left if you provide negative numbers. So yeah, that about ends it for this video. And as always, I wanna thank you guys for chilling out here with me and hopefully learning you something new today. What can I say? I always talk about some minimal uh, pitfalls and I guess real life use cases. Pagination is a great one when you have thousands of items, you can use slice to extract different subsets of your data if you wanna paginate it for some reason, but you have everything uh, fetched in that particular space already. Uh, array transformations are really good for this as well. I think splice is something you can see on our YouTube channel. Look up my coworker Andrew has a YouTube video called uh, answering a real life react interview question or something like that. I'll try and remember to add it to the description of this video after I shoot this and record this and, and, and upload it. But, uh, he made a video that talks about moving elements in an array and updating state, which is a perfect use case for having splice somewhere in there. So yeah. Um, I want to say, Hope y'all got something in this video. Do the YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe, do all those fun kind of stuff. Check out the description for the code pen for this final fi finalized code and give us a thumbs up and, and all that kind of fun thing. So until our next code rendezvous, happy coding y'all.